Hey everyone, another Space Arcade update. I've added sound of the game. I decided to use OpenAL since it's similar to OpenGL. OpenAL tracks sounds in 3D space, it uses positions but also velocity. This lets OpenAL create a Doppler effect on your sounds, which you can hear as lasers pass by the ship. I added a persistent engine sound. I added a sound for the ship explosions. I've added a sound for the muscle fire, and I've added sound to projectiles. I also went to the main menu and added some click sounds. Currently, the objectives will use the owning ship's sounds. So like the turrets will shoot the same sounds as the lasers that the carrier ship has assigned to it. The model editor for making mods has a new section, sound. Here you can configure properties of the sound like whether they're looping, how loud they are, the file path, how much variation in pitch it should be when they play. The whole audio system is hooked into time dilation too, so if we slow down time, the audio will react correctly. This is done by adjusting a global pitch multiplier. So like when we reduce time by half, time dilation is 0.5. The global pitch factor will also be set to 0.5. Surprisingly, this works and just feels right. This is my first time creating an audio system. On my computer, I have 255 simultaneous mono sound sources, which basically means I can have 255 3D sounds playing at once. This number can change from computer to computer, but I have thousands of ships each needing multiple sounds. So sounds are a limited resource. Sounds are a resource of the API, which is likely done in software, but in code, I've been referring to them as a hardware resource. Anyways, I just kind of went with my first idea of how a sound system should work. This isn't necessarily the best way to do it, but this is how I did it. I created a high level function called Tick Audio Pipeline. This communicates at a high level the, how the audio system works. All the gameplay code uses audio emitters. There will be thousands of emitters. Behind the scenes, the audio system assigns OpenAL sound resources to the audio emitters. The gameplay code, for the most part, is unaware of an, if its emitter has an audio source. The gameplay code is just expected to assume the system will work. The audio system prioritizes sounds. It maintains a list of active emitters that the user, that is the gameplay programmer, is trying to play. Audio emitters can have different priorities set to them. Right now, this is kind of arbitrary. Most of the sounds have the same priority anyways. The next best thing is to use distance to prioritize sounds. Each frame, the audio system reprioritizes audio emitters based on where the player camera is. This means the audio system must tick after the player camera positioning is done for the frame. Each frame, the audio system begins the pipeline by caching state variables like time dilation and the current world time. It then updates the listener, which is the player. This enables OpenAL to correctly do things like the Doppler effect. Next, the audio pipeline updates all active emitters. These may or may not end up with the limited audio resources. It adds any new emitters that have been queued up to this active list. It waited to add emitters because the gameplay code may have activated deactivated many times in the same frame. It then walks over the active emitters list. Sounds can fade in and fade out, so it updates that state here. If an emitter has a limited audio source, but it's not playing currently, then it flags it as inactive because the system needs to give that resource to something else. There's also some logic to end sounds that were too low a priority and never ended up playing. So like if you played a very low priority sound that lasted five seconds and five seconds passed, then it just removes that sound entirely because you don't want to hear it later. Now that the state has been updated, it calculates the priority value for this emitter. Right now there's only one player, but to support split screen in the future, it finds the closest player and uses that player as a distance check. If the sound is in range, it calculates a value and adds it to the priority. Otherwise it marks it out of range, which means it won't receive audio resources or they'll be removed. This function also removes inactive emitters from the list. Next, the audio pipeline does a sort of the active emitters. This is big O of n log n for each frame where n is the number of active sounds. The sort just uses the calculated priority from the previous step in the pipeline. Next, the audio pipeline figures out which sounds will get sound resources and which will be called. There's a few transient lists that get cleared each frame. The underlying memory is reserved though, so the underlying buffers are not actually resizing their allocated memory each frame. This reservation matches the API limitations. So if we allow 255 sounds, then these lists are sized to 255. The culling step then walks over the now sorted active emitters. There's a few criteria for if a sound will be culled from the hardware list. The primary criteria is whether or not the sound is within the index position that is under the limited sound sources. Like if we have 255 mono sound sources and the current emitter is position 114, then it'll get an API source. However, if the 
emitter's position about 100, it'll not receive a resource because it's beyond what we have. It also does some sanity checks, like did the sound just get deactivated, and is the sound in range? Based on the results of the call step, the emitters are either added to a list needing sound resources, or added to a list of sounds that have resources and need to keep their sources, or added to a list of resources that have sounds and need them removed. The pipeline then processes the list needing resources removed. It attempts to fade out and fade in sounds before removing them. This may take multiple frames. If it is finished fading, that is, if the fade multiplier is zero, then the sound source is evicted. The pipeline then processes the list of emitters needing sound sources. It figures out how many resources it has free to give to emitters. These emitters should be in sorted order since we processed the user list that was sorted. If the system has a resource either from a recycling pool or by creating a new resource, then it gives it to the emitter. It does some setup on the source, and then it adds it to the list of emitters with our resources. Finally, the list of emitters with hardware resources has finished processing. It loops over these emitters to update their properties. Because emitters may be moving around in 3D space, we need to check if we should update the OpenAL source properties like position and velocity. Because audio emitters are closely associated with a limited resource, the gameplay code cannot just create emitters out of nowhere. It has to ask the audio system to create one for it. The audio system then tracks all the emitters for their entire lifetime. Because of this, we need to detect when there's no more uses of an emitter so that we don't leak emitters. So there's a small walk over all the emitters created to see if it should be destroyed. This is the garbage collection step in the pipeline. It's not like real garbage collection. It cannot resolve circular references or anything, but it is close to that concept. It uses a tool that only walks a few indices each frame. I currently have it set to 10, so it has constant complexity, big O of 1. If any emitter has a use count of 1, then we know the only reference to it is the all emitters list. So we remove it from that list after cleaning up some resources it may hold. So, there were a lot of bugs in the system. Eventually sounds would stop playing, or I would only hear one type of sound. To help this, I created two features. The first is visual debugging. You can type a cheat into the console and a sphere will be rendered at an emitter source that has hardware resources. The second, which turned out to be more useful, is conditional compiled logging. I created macros at the top of the CPP file, so they're only defined in the audio system.cpp. If you enable these flags, then it'll compile code that adds logging. This logging provides great detail about the state transitions of emitters and sound sources. It also prints the pointers so that you can track what's happening to individual emitters. This is how I solved most of the bugs. I would copy the logs into VS Code and text replace addresses to give them easy names to identify. Though I typically lean heavily on a debugger, I think this is a good example of where print line debugging can actually be superior to breakpoint debugging. There were just too many sounds for me to use a debugger to step through all the code. While I could have used conditional breakpoints, that's true, they still required more effort than just creating conditional logs. While the logs are active, performance does take a pretty severe hit, but using conditional breakpoints also causes performance to hit. And so if you need the logs, you can enable them, but if you don't, just set that flag to zero and they'll compile out and not have any performance cost. Well, that's it for this update. I'm sure there's still more lingering bugs with the first draft of the system, but I'll address them as I find them. And with that, I hope you have a great day.